state your name, please? I'm Thomas Edward Hereford. What is your professional career? I am a retired school teacher. I retired, uh, I taught for 36 years, totally. Uh, first job was in Decatur, Alabama, and last for 20 years, and the last 16 was at the Gristom High School in Huntsville. Okay. Mm -hmm. What year did you attend Council High School? Well, I started Council High School in 30, I believe it was 34 or 5. Okay. <laughs> in the second grade, that was a long time ago. Okay. Mm -hmm. What year did you graduate? Well, I gradu graduated in uh, 45. Okay. Did you reside uh, near Council Court? No, I lived at about five or six years, I mean five or six miles from Council High School and uh, with uh, my brother, Dr. Hereford, uh, in the country on Blue Spring Road. We had to pretty much walk to or rode our bicycles to school for the, for the most part. How would you rate the education received at Council High School? Oh, I would think that uh, at that time it was uh, what we was getting was superior in terms of the teachers. Now, although you know we were, it, everything was segregated at that the time, there were no, were not any whites or uh, blacks going to school at the time. But uh, we had good black teachers, I think, uh, and. Uh, I feel that I got a, a pretty good high school education. What were, um, were there any instructors who influenced you to a significant degree? Oh yeah, I, we had some very powerful teachers and as I began to think about some, Professor Campbell and uh, he was our principal at that time and Rebe uh, Professor Richards. That was Mrs. Uh, Gandhi, Mrs. Finn, Mrs. Swopes, uh, Mrs. Uh, Fields, and quite a few more that uh, would. Oh yeah, Mrs. Allen. Yeah, she was my fifth grade teacher. I don't want to leave her out because <laughs> she was right on the ball and boy, get your lesson. <laughs> <laughs> Were your future career path developed while attending Council High School? To some extent, uh, because uh, after leaving Council High School, I had to go into the army. And then after I got out of the Army, I went to in Alabama A&M, and this is when I had planned, I had in mind of becoming brick mason or mason when I first started, but uh, as I began to pursue my education, I thought about the possibility of becoming a teacher. Mm -hmm. And this is what uh, led me to the profession of trying to pursue a degree in teaching. Okay. What were your feelings when integration was implemented in 1966? I had missed, missed a motion about that, and, but uh, I had been working with my brother, Dr. Hereford, and this committee, which he uh, started to try to bring about integration in Huntsville in the, in the early 60s. And uh, we had an organization in Huntsville that uh, worked on this. And he was one of the leaders, and he got me involved. And I marched around town and carried sign and was with them in Birmingham when uh, we had the 
court case concerning integration and was with the attorney Motley mm -hmm. and uh, listened to the all of the program, I mean all of the stories concerning integration and, uh, and segregation in Huntsville and in the South and was with uh, was in court when the decision to desegregate at that time. Yeah, I remember asking the judge, I mean asking really our attorney at the time before any any decision had been rendered, uh, how did she feel that thing was gone? That was the time when we were at our luncheon before the, uh, during the break after the first session that morning. And uh, she said, "I thought I thought we was l losing the case." She said, "Looks good." <laughs> and uh, and sure enough, when the, we came back that evening uh, to listen to what uh, the decision, and she, she said the judge went right ahead and he didn't deliberate anymore. Just went ahead and gave a decision on what Huntsville had to do in terms of the representatives that we had. I think it was must have been four or five of the ki kids in Huntsville that were supposed to have been integrated into this system. And one, one of the kids was my brother's kid, mm -hmm. little Sonny. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I was right there with him. How did you adjust uh, to the integrated environment? Well, at the time, I, I was uh, I was teaching, and uh, when it came about that uh, teachers, along with the students, had to be integrated, uh, I was working at the previously all black high school in Decatur that was called Lakeside high school and then they began to send various teachers from Lakeside to the other white uh, schools and I went to, uh, let's say some went to Decatur, white, uh, to Decatur high school and some went to uh, Austin and some went to was the other high schools we had? I believe it was three there. But uh, I was sent to one of the high schools there. I can't recall right now just which one it was. It will come to me a little later. And uh, by the way, I, 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 maybe I should tell you that I have a little problem. Uh, I had a stroke okay. two years ago. I lost my speech, uh, but it's coming back, and, uh, thank God. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so I have a little problem remembering some of the things that I would like to tell you in terms of uh, some of the things that uh, happened to me mm -hmm. during that time. But uh, my health is fairly good right now. I, I'm going back to therapy now. In summary, anything else that you want to tell us about Council High or about your family or your upbringing? Anything at all that you want to? <clears throat> well, yeah. I I was married to the uh, journey young lady for my first wife, she's a deceit. She was eight and I remarried to uh, Nancy Laws, and that's my present wife now. We've been married for about 26 years now. Okay. And uh, I have uh, uh, two children by my previous wife, my, my first wife, two boys, Wellington Hereford, 
and Darius White Hereford, and, and they are grown and out working. Uh, Wellington works for the county uh, system here in Huntsville, mm -hmm. Madison County, and Darius is, uh, went to Grissom with me at the time, and then he, after that he went to UAB and then back to Xavier, mm -hmm. and he is uh, he's a pharmacist now okay. in Michigan, and uh, works out of his house, and I'm very proud of all of those kids, and uh -huh. uh, yeah, they look like they're doing okay, and haven't been in any trouble or anything like that, you know. And, and uh, I met Nancy, and she has a son. I got a stepson by Robert, and two beautiful grandchildren mm -hmm. that we thank the world of, and they stays with us quite a bit. Uh, and uh, basically, that's uh, my my present family right now, yeah. Okay. Now you said that you had been drafted. You spent some time... Oh yeah, yeah. I, had to, I, I, I was pulled out of high school at last. I went to graduation. And uh, in fact, just a few uh, months before graduation, I had to go to the Army. But I got my diploma before I left. Mm -hmm. And I spent some time in the Philippine Islands in Second World War. Okay. And uh, and I was fortunate enough to just a couple of three months ago to go on the uh, the honor fight to to uh, Washington. Okay. Because of that, uh, my work with any army, you know. Yeah. Okay, you've probably heard us mention something in the past about trying to restore Council High, but we're at the point now where we can't do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, right now we're trying to seek funds or get a grant or whatever and build a building and name it after Council High School. But can you share with us what your feelings about us trying to uh, Build a building. Uh, well, I uh, I stopped at the market that's on the premises premises there now, and read that and whatever. I wish we could do something because that is a one of our most important landmarks, mm -hmm. and anything that I could do and my friends or my family can do to. Help to do to get that restored or get another building. I'd be so happy to uh, do it, and we'll support it a hundred percent. And uh, hopefully that we have a lot of other uh, people in Huntsville will do the same thing because uh, the old Council High is one of the places that we'll get. Uh, well, I know I want, mm -hmm. and I hope we have other people feel the same way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm just sitting here thinking, you know, when you were in school as a kid, were there ever times where you may have had happy times or sad times or dread times when you had to go to school? Oh, yeah. that. Uh, well, first, let me let me just mention, mention something about some of the good times. Uh, we were able to formulate at the time when I was in high school. Uh, we had a club called the Dukes, and that is uh, and Professor Richard and Mrs. Uh, Fields were our advisors, and we were juniors, well, junior seniors. Uh, and we, this was kind of a 
a charitable and social club that we were very proud of. We were in envy of the city because of most of the girls looked like they it was t t taken to the Dukes. <laughs> we we it was about fifteen or maybe eighteen young mem members, and uh, uh, we were the best, seemingly best dressed, and we had the uh, we were the leaders in the football basketball uh, activities and uh, and we had some very nice entertainment that we would bring into the city and, uh, and it was an organization that uh, was kind of born born out of uh, of uh, the school mm -hmm. but we were very close knit knitted group and we uh, stayed in contact for years and years after uh, school was over, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, it's not but about four of us around now. Uh, we have a picture of the Dukes and just one of, just last week, was, Dan Brandom, we would funeralize him. Uh, he was one of the, he was really one of the uh, members and one of the founders of the organization. And he was also our quarterback for our team at the time, uh, Dan Brandom. Mm -hmm. uh, there was, Oliver Hardy, there was Sales, Pre 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 uh, Pleasant, Grant Harris, E.G. Williams, and we had um, Roy Smith and uh, Tom, Her Tom Herford and, and one or two others. I can call right now, but we were all members of that organization who, who we had some good times at mm -hmm. uh, Council High at that time. Then there was some times when uh, uh, we didn't have everything that we thought we should have had in terms of, uh, of when we began to think about some of the things that the other white uh, students had at the other places in terms of of our uh, unit farms for football and basketball. A lot of ours was handed down, uh, mm -hmm. given over from uh, some of the other white schools. Mm -hmm. uh, and. Uh, <laughs> These and we didn't have the library uh, lunch rooms that some of the we found that some of the other schools had. So that, the white that, schools did have libraries and, and oh, lunch rooms. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I was, yeah, we didn't have it, but uh, <laughs> I guess we made it by teachers. Supplied, supplied us with books and things that uh, that we could, you know, use or let us use and whatever. But these were some of the things that, uh, well, would make you want to try to better yourself mm -hmm. as a people. And this is some of the things that we fought for, and uh, and we are proud of some of the pro progress that we've had down through the years. Mm -hmm. Did you participate in any of the sports of the band or? Oh yeah, yeah, I played football. Okay. I was a, <laughs> <laughs> I played football for Professor Richards 
and uh, I played position. My position was a uh, uh, pulling guard. Okay. And uh, I also played some uh, uh, center at the time when I was at uh, Lakeside. I mean at uh, Council I. But I. I don't think they have too much of that now, but, uh, <coughs> excuse me, that was one of those positions where that the guard position would, after the ball was, uh, was snapped, instead of him running and hitting his man directly in front of him, he would just turn mm -hmm. and run in a fence for the man with the ball, okay. with the quarterback, uh, the man with the ball. And it co we, uh, Prof. Richard called that a pulling guard. And uh, I was pretty good. And, uh, <laughs> plus the fact, I was, uh, I was living in the country, you know, and we country boys was trying to do all we could to try to make sure we could show up pretty good with those little slickers <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, on the football game, but uh, field. But um, I, very, uh, I never will forget that. That was my position and enjoyed that. Yeah. Okay. Any closing remarks? You have anything else? Give us a little more information about the integration. Oh, yeah, well, what happened? Uh, I, re I remember the sign. I never will forget the sign that I had on me when I was walking around Huntsville. Uh, my sign said, uh, Shoot Shrep, or whatever his name was, can eat here, why can't I? Okay. And that was one of the that was one of the signs I had, and I was I was I was spit upon several times, mm -hmm. and told me that I ought to be served served to the wolves. I was I was I was told that as I was marching around the courthouse at that time, <laughs> just quietly smiling, because. They was telling us you can't get invited, <laughs> but uh, but at the time that I was kind of spit upon, I almost lost my cool because <laughs> I, you know, I mean, but I I kept walking, carried my nut sign, said, "Screw self could eat here, why can't I?" But uh, then after my brother got quite a few threats, uh, threats yeah, about. Uh, his involvement, uh, he had got several calls, so I sat up, I sat with him quite a few nights, uh, thinking that I was going, helping to protect him, you know, mm -hmm. and um, well, he sat around and played cards, and joked, and just had a lot of fun, but it all had to do with some of the things that had happened to in the community concerning what we were trying to, at that particular time. But uh, yeah, that, those were just trying times. I recall one time when uh, the Ku Klux Klan's uh, had a rally off of uh, Blake Bottom and uh, Several of us got in the in the uh, fields and in the cotton pass with our rifles and things. We we were just watching mm -hmm. what was going on, and we didn't try to. <clears throat> we didn't want them to see us, and we didn't want them to see us with our rifles. But we did watch them, and that was that. That was uh, an experience that I witness and they burned a couple of crosses and we watched that.
we was at a distance where we could see what was going on. But but uh, we, I feel that some things have changed and things are getting better. We've come a long ways. We've still got a piece to go, I think, mm -hmm. uh, building. Since President Obama uh, is the president and they've got all the tea parties and all this other stuff that's going on about race relations, what's your uh, opinion about all this well, confusion? Well, <clears throat> first I'd just like to say I never thought that I would live to see a black president and I'm very pleased to see that. And I uh, hopefully that uh, we will would see some good out of the whole thing. But now we we do find that uh, a lot of resentment coming from certain fashions of the communities and uh, country that uh, seem to trying to block everything that he's trying to do mm -hmm. in terms of the laws that uh, help everybody and especially the uh, middle, uh, middle class, you know, and, uh, and when I read, uh, as I've re listened to the last year, of his, his administration for the most part, how the people wouldn't, did, didn't want to uh, reach across the aisle to help in, uh, regardless of what he uh, attempted to do. And uh, it looked like everybody tried to drop, I mean, block everything good, even if, if you thought it was good, uh, to try to block what uh, uh, he was trying to do. And, you know, that looked like I was just hoping that you will fail, you know. We talk about jobs and creating jobs and trying and uh, how many different people are out of work? But uh, if if we, we don't kind of get together, mm -hmm. you know, and work together, both Democrats and Republicans and Independents and er everybody else, then uh, the whole country look like it will suffer, and not just a few. Mm -hmm. And um, but when you start talking about uh, certain fashions like the Tea Party, uh, Fox News, and, and one or two other uh, of our uh, 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 a media that try to portray uh, what's going on and what need to be going on to help everybody, uh, it looked like they were try, trying to fight it, fight the young man on every, every, every uh, corner. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, that's not good for our total economy, I wouldn't think. Well, when, when you begin to think about education of our young people, you think in terms of, I don't know whether it's the our media, uh, the technology that uh, have changed from the time when we were growing up, uh, some of the things that the young people ha have access to that seem to make them uh, against some of the things that we are trying to do, good. And uh, I, and when you think about uh, violence and crime, it looks like it's kind of on, it's on the rise, on the rise. Uh, instead of 
uh, fallen. So I, I, I think we, we, we got to get more involved. Our parents that also got to get more involved, in, involved with our children mm -hmm. and trying to teach them and really show them a, about the the values that uh, we need to try to stick to instead of just uh, ha happy-go-lucky of everything that's going on and it's all right. It, but, uh, and one of the things that bothers me is these young men with the with the pants down and hang uh, below the uh, knees almost, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and that's a fact that too many of our young people are taking on to, and, and, and that's not good. I, don't, I, won't, I wouldn't think. We got to find more respect for our young, men, young ladies, too. Mm -hmm. That's another thing that we as a people, and especially our black people, need to take a little more pride in uh, being like we ought to be for our women. Now that you're retired, what do you do with your spare time? Well, right now, uh, being retired, and uh, I, of course, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm about uh, had this stroke that I told you about, and my diabetic, and uh, but uh, I'm still working with uh, Alabama and them alumnus, and uh, I've followed all of the games, and I'm I got uh, I'm involved with my church. Center Grove United Methodist Church. I'm uh, chairman of my uh, trustee board at the present time. And I also uh, am a member of uh, the Boosters Club, uh, and we follow in them around everywhere they go. And I just have a good time as far as my help will let me do at mm -hmm. this time, you know. Because I've I've seen a lot of years pass, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, there's just so much that you can do now that you would like to to have you know, do do, you know. Uh, but uh, I enjoy I enjoy life. I, I got my wife is uh, very protective of me and make sure that I get my medicines like I should, you know, and on time, and and uh, I'm still, in, I still do some work for volunteer. I still cut half with several of the in, uh, people in my church and uh, on a, a bottom there base where it's, uh, I'm helping somebody, mm -hmm. and that's that's what I'd like for my legend to be. I tried to help somebody. That's a good one. Could you share with us a little bit about the veterans' flight? Well, what happened, you know, I was an organization that formed uh, several years ago, a couple of three years ago, I believe, uh, that decided to start taking the war, World War II veterans who had serve the country, take them to the memorial in Washington. Mm -hmm. And um, we, we would carry, uh, they would carry about a hundred plus at the time. And they've had, I believe, four or five flights. I believe last week was supposed to have been the last one, but I went to the one about uh, couple of months ago, mm -hmm. and uh, they flew us to Washington and, and fed us good and carried us around. We had had uh, people with their 
uh, pushed out of wheelchairs, you know. Most of us weren't able to walk all of that, so mm -hmm. and carried us to the different e exhibits uh, in Washington and went to the uh, uh, memorials of the soldiers of, of all of the wars and conflicts that we've had. They had the memorials, you know, that was dedicated for each one of the groups. Uh, and that was a very beautiful trip. They carried us up and brought us back the same night, you know. And um, we was able to meet with uh, one or two representatives in Washington, and they came out and spoke to us, and they welcomed us over there. And yeah, it was a beautiful, beautiful trip, beautiful trip. Everything was free. Everything was free.